Ah, hopefully that's not a mirage. I think I see my car in the distance. Maybe another quarter mile. Oh, I really pushed this one to the limit. Hi, I'm Paris here at Black Mesa, Oklahoma, the highest point in the state. I'm at the bottom of it. Got to get up to the top. It's just over eight miles round trip with about 800 or so feet elevation gain. I got here at dawn because it's going to be 105 degrees later today. So I got to get in and get back out before that happens. It was 105 degrees when I rolled into western Oklahoma yesterday. So I was waiting until this morning before the sun even came up to do my hike. My goal is to get in and out by 10.30. It'll be up to the mid 80s by then. And boy, the energy just goes away when the heat gets that high. Trail's pretty easy here for the first two and a half miles. A Little bit of going up, but uh, looks like they do drive vehicles on this. This is a very nice hike and it very much doesn't seem like Oklahoma. That's because we're at the far western edge of it. And it's sort of more like New Mexico. I understand these are juniper trees. As for animal life, I just saw a rabbit by the side of the trail, but he didn't want to be on video. I swear that sun is rising faster than it usually does. Hasn't warmed things up here yet. Still about 70, 71 degrees. Fairly low humidity, maybe 50%. Here's a really nice thing that the Black Mesa, I guess, Nature Conservancy has done. Every mile, they have put a bench. Here's a nice panorama view about a mile and a half into the hike. Is that the mesa I'm gonna be climbing? That's kinda of high. <laughs> Little bit of clouds. I sure wish there were more. Some blinding sun right there. More mesas, really nice ones in the distance. But the one I'm here for is this one. See that mesa behind me, the one with the trail cut into it? That's the one. Mile number two bench. Here's where the trail really starts going up. Ah, this next half mile is gonna make me or break me. If you're not a regular viewer, you may wonder why I'm so concerned about the heat. And really this isn't a very challenging climb, but I'm in my third year of cancer treatment. I uh, did the chemo, did the radiation a couple years back, but I'm still on medication called Lupron. It keeps the testosterone at zero. No, no, no testosterone for almost three years and also leaves me anemic. And I would guess I'm coming up on 5,000 feet elevation here. Not a lot of elevation, but enough to notice it when you're going uphill. So with those additional factors, been a little worried about whether I'm gonna be able to manage this. And so that's why I'm so worried about the sun coming up and the heat because I have precious little energy as it is, and anything that saps even a little bit more of it may stop me from getting to the top. Just finished the first big switchback, and oh, this beautiful view here. I've been using my electric umbrella as a walking stick, but I may need to put it to its other use. You notice on here, solar panels, and inside there's a fan, solar-powered fan, for when the heat gets to be too much. That moment may come soon. Ah, me in silhouette. Hey, up there, there's a bench. That's mile marker three. That's supposed to be near the top. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, mile three bench. You may notice that you can see a lot of the trail down there and there's nobody on it. There were no cars in the parking lot when I got here. So there's nobody up gonna be coming down. I have this Mesa to myself. Oh, I was enjoying listening to the birds. All I hear now is my heart pounding in my chest. This trail looks like it goes up into the sky. And I gotta remember, I need the energy to get all the way back to the car. But I'm getting to the top of this Mesa. Monument or not, I'm doing this. It really feels like I'm coming to the top here. <sighs> if only I could walk straight. Come on, you can do this. Mm. Sudden burst of energy. <sighs> hey, top of the Mesa to ya. I made it to the top of the Mesa. 
It's about another mile to get to the monument, but this was the hard part. I am proud of myself. The trail is so different up here. It's a uh, different lava rocks, basically. So it's not the nice soft dirt. Maybe that's why we don't have the trees up here. Well, not as many. It seems to be more grass without the soil to hold on to the moisture. No more need for a walking stick on this kind of lava-y trail, the next mile to the monument. So time to turn the umbrella into an umbrella with the fan. One thing I'll say about the grasshoppers here, maybe you can see them all hopping away as I come down the trail, is they've got some big grasshoppers here. I swear the size of frogs. There's a gigantic one. Size of a frog. Yes, you are. Size of a frog. How close are you gonna let me get? Over there, straight ahead, I can see the monument. I'm probably about a third of a mile away from it. Think I'm gonna make it. And with the sunflower to greet me, I have made it. On the four sides of the monument, you have the four directions. East, there's Kansas, 53 miles away. To the south, Texas, 31 miles. West is New Mexico, just about a quarter of a mile. And Colorado is just about five miles away. But most importantly of all, I am here at the highest point in Oklahoma, 4,972.97 feet above the sea. I have still got to get back down. I've been shepherding my energy. The feet and the toes are complaining, but the rest of me is surprisingly good. I'm gonna have a snack, gonna have a drink, gonna head back that away. Almost to the edge of the mesa, about to start back down. Let me show you the view from here. It's nice, it'll be even nicer as I go down and I will have time to enjoy it because I'm not gonna be able to go very fast. It's in the 80s already. I stayed a little too long at the top, taking pictures, doing live stream. Hi, this is Paris. I am here, the highest point in Oklahoma, Black Mesa, like the shirt says. You can find out more about this shirt once I'm able to put a link down below this video, I'll link right to it. Or you can go to Amazon and search um, Black Mesa, Oklahoma t-shirt. This one will come up. And so, yeah, it's in the 80s already, and I'm in need of some cooling. I may stop at the bench, take out my cooling towel and soak it, and uh, make sure I get safely down the mesa because my legs are a little stumbly at the moment. But, oh, wow, on the views. He'll be stumbling down the mountain. He'll be stumbling down the mountain. He'll be stumbling down the mountain when he comes. Well, I made it to the three mile marker bench. Time for a short break here. I'm getting kind of stumbly with these large rocks. Beautiful view here. It's going up, I'd say a degree about every 15 minutes. I still got three miles to go. Got my Enduro Cool cooling towel. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's nice and cold. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh. Get on the carotid arteries there. Oh, cool that blood going to the brain. Oh, there we go. No bugs. It's not for you, it's for me. <laughs> That's all the break time I can afford. Oh, with this on me, it's giving me some extra energy. Heading back down, let's knock out another mile here. I think I'm about halfway down the mesa. The cooling towel is helping a lot. I'm looking out here at the view though, and the trail. No sign of anyone. I'm the only one around for miles, so I better make it down. Can it be the bottom of the mesa? Just a little more stumbling. <laughs> and then for the last two and a half miles, it's just heat versus willpower. I thought this was the mile two bench over here, but it doesn't say that. And I'm not sure I remember seeing this on the way up. I'm hallucinating benches now. Let me show you though, it's cool. It looks like they have an emergency water um, canister right next to the bench. What's really nice is they have a shade with this bench. Here is emergency water. That's really nice of them. Can you see in there? The problem is most of the bottles are empty. People use this as a recycling station for their empty plastic bottles. I think there are a few uh, full ones in there. I have enough water, but I just wanted to check what was in here. I also see a first aid kit. Good job, Nature Conservancy. Well, maybe that other bench was a mirage. <laughs> Here's the mile two bench. So I'm halfway down from the monument back to my car. The temperature's going up fast. 
nice view of the mesa. You can maybe see the line on it there where I came down. I am sitting now at the mile one bench. Uh, first time I've sat the whole time, uh, the whole climb. But it's not good because, oh my gosh, am I wiped out. I had to break out my emergency equipment, which is this. It's a cold pack. You break it, and just like those packs you break, they uh, heat up to heat up your hands when it's cold. With this, you break it, shake it, stick it on the carotid artery, get a little bit of cooling going to the brain. I've got one mile left, which would ordinarily be about 20 minutes, but I am so slow, I'm just dragging now. It's going to be at least half an hour before I get back to uh, the car. I guess I wouldn't quite call this a 96 Everest situation, but it's similar in that they had the 2 p.m. turnaround time and they didn't. They, they fudged it and it cost them. I had a 9.30 turnaround time for the top. I told myself, you got to turn it. Was it 9.30? No, it was 9 o'clock. <laughs> the brain's going fast, cold on the carotid. Um, yeah, it was a 9, p 9 a.m. turnaround time. So I was giving myself... Um, Two and a half hours to get to the, to, to ah, I don't remember, but I know I should have turned around and come down sooner than I, than I, than I did, because I was up there recording videos and whatnot, and look where it got me. By the way, this is so nice to have. It's already losing the cool, and I popped it only like 10, 12 minutes ago, so it doesn't last that long. Probably there'll be no cold left in 30 minutes, but it's something, and um, what's it called? Clever Health, Clever Health Cold Pack. <laughs> if you want it in your hiking emergency kit, you'll find a link for it down below this video. Assuming I get back to the car and get to make the video. Had some Ajwa dates, direct from Saudi Arabia. If anybody knows about living in the desert, it's people in that part of the world. So I'm hoping the energy from these, some more water that I'm gonna pour on my head and that cold pack on the carotid, Get me this last mile back to the car. Ah, hopefully that's not a mirage. I think I see my car in the distance. Maybe another quarter mile. Oh, I really pushed this one to the limit. Now that I'm pretty sure I'm going to make it to the car, it's oh, 300 feet away, but just, uh, I don't know, 800 feet away, I had to stop again every five minutes. Uh, to drink more water, pour more water on this cooling towel. Without, without this, I would, I would be curled up under a juniper tree back there somewhere, hoping that uh, when it got dark, I was still around to finish walking out then. There's the trailhead, the entrance gate, the car. How did I not see this sign before I started? And the parking lot, as empty as when I got here before dawn. Nobody here was gonna save me. Rental car, I am so happy to see you. How close did I push it? Well, for the last mile, my the front of my legs was, were, each leg was threatening to cramp up. Not the back, not the Charlie horse. The fronts and uh, a couple times when I stumbled and uh, they you know got out of position they started to turn in and like to cramp in there oh my gosh don't do this how am I gonna walk out with this and then got here open the door of the car right <laughs> and I go in to start I got to step on the brake and push the button I can't get my foot in when I try to bring my foot in my Charlie horse goes oh I mean my Whatever it is, the back of my leg, oh, I cramped up and I had to stand on it for a minute to get it to let go. And I had to actually take my shoe off and lift my leg into the car so I could put it on the brake, so I could push the start button, start the air conditioner going. I pushed it too close. <laughs>